All right, you guys, podcast time. We got the equipment and the perfect business plan. Give our show away for free and tell no one how to find it. Ready? Welcome to another episode of the Brand X Podcast. I am one of your hosts, John. With me is Deuce. Come and stop, bitches. And also, Joe. We are Joeless. Mm -hmm. Joe, unfortunately, is under the weather. He's got a case of the diverticulitis, which, if anybody's ever had that before, it is extremely painful. Not a whole lot of fun. I wonder if he'll uh, tune in on the live feed. I'll be looking to see if I see him come in on the live feed. He'll pop in. And it was really weird because I was all excited today because... I got Joe a chair. Yeah. Just like your chair, because everybody was whining and bitching because, yo, look, you don't get a comfortable chair. That chair has padding. Yeah. It just doesn't roll around. That chair will probably last longer. Well, I don't know. The new one. Mm-hmm. And I, I went and got a new chair now for my fat ass. Your sensitive dairy air. My sensitive dairy air. We still look like we're at a- A basement. Well, yeah, we are in a basement. <laughs> it still looks like we're in a basement. But anyhow- A militia meeting? Yes. And, you know, I guess this whole techno bully thing is really coming back to bite me in the ass because last week we had a host of errors. Mm -hmm. And remember I said I wanted the the, Well, that was the new mixer. The new mixer. No, it wasn't. It was the old uh, producer. The old John. The producer didn't realize he had a mix minus going. So if I would have turned a knob up, there would have been music. Oh. So on Facebook, when I went to, when I was singing the techno bully song. Everybody on Facebook couldn't hear the music. So I go back to listen, <laughs> and there's no music. And Joe, and we're sitting there bebopping, and you were bebopping too, my friend. Just so oh, you I know. know I was, but I wasn't singing. No, you weren't singing. But <laughs> now let go to hide it. I'm singing, and Joe's like, you know, playing the drums and everything, and they can't hear a thing. They can't hear any music. They just hear me. It's like pantomime. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, it was the most embarrassing thing. Like, I, I don't. It takes a lot to embarrass me. Okay, <laughs> when I'm watching that, my ass was trying to tear a hole in the seat. <laughs> it was it was puckering up so tight, and I was like, oh. And I would have immediately deleted it, except Jackass you forgot to push, push the, the record, record button. button last week. So I had, again, again. So I had to have the first half hour of the Facebook audio. So I downloaded that Facebook audio. And then by the time I got that, as soon as I got it, made sure that I had the audio and everything, I went right back and deleted that video. So you can't even go back and watch that video. <laughs> I, oh, Didn't that get like 12,000 views? It was a, a half a million views. <laughs> it's it was, been saved. It was brutal. Dude, I, I couldn't watch it. Because I'm sitting there after you guys left. and Were went you home, like wincing? I went upstairs and I, I said, oh, I wonder how that's, that sounded, you know, live. And all of a sudden I'm like. Where's the music? And I hear myself. I'm like, oh, my God, there's no music. And I'm like, and then I'm sitting there and I'm like, and I get back. I lean into the mic again. Like, I'm, I was like, oh, oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. You went about a day I, and a half before I found out about it. Like, it, you finally sent the message out. Like, the douche chills that I got from watching that were horrific. So <laughs> that's all gone. Yeah, so that is truly now the lost episode. Well, yes, it is. Because... On the recording side of it, the music was there. Mm -hmm. So we're listening to the music and we're rocking out. Meanwhile. It's a cruel joke. And it was all your fault, not the mixer. It was not the mixer. I could, I should have just, you know, I could keep quiet and say that it was the mixer. Mm -hmm. But to be honest with you, it's not. And to be honest with you. There's too many producers out there. They'll call you out on it. Well, they, you know, I I don't know if they would have known. I don't know if they would have known or not. So... One of the reasons that I like doing this is because it keeps me into the podcasting space and, you know, I make the same mistakes as the people that I edit for and everybody makes mistakes. See, the thing about it is today, and I don't know if you've found this, but I, I find this with my kids. They're so afraid to make a mistake that they, they're, they paralyze them. They're terrified. Mm-hmm. Where Paralysis by analysis. Right. So what for me, I'm like, get out there and make mistakes and then learn how to be not embarrassed by making your mistakes. because. You'll never do anything mm-hmm. if you get embarrassed by you know making a mistake. You just chalk it up. Fair enough. Yeah. I screwed up. Won't do that again. Won't do that. Well, I learned. I learned not to do that. That's one way not Check to do it. Check the plus minus uh, Navi do hickey yeah. thingy. So now, 
just because I said that. I have the plus. Now, if I ever have to play anything off of the internet, now it's up. It'll work. Uh huh. So we won't have that problem here. But I'm uh, glad I decided not to sing. <laughs> I think we all are. So anyhow, we that was one thing. And then I got the show together and I got everything. And it was like, as soon as I was getting ready to publish, all hell broke loose in my life. I got the episode out to Slings, Flings, and Dinglings. I also got it out to Jay over at Radio Vegas Rock. So our we went live on Slings, Flings, and Dinglings and Radio Vegas Rock before I got a chance to publish it to iTunes, before it went out to everybody else. Usually it goes out the day before. I try to get it out Tuesday. Mm-hmm. But to no avail. Just everything broke loose here. And well, I don't think I got the artwork to you. Yeah, but that's until Tuesday sec- night. When you give me the artwork, it's just too. It wouldn't that wouldn't even have been a problem. Mm-hmm. That wasn't even a problem. Yes, Daryl, I did hit record, <laughs> so, <laughs> and it becomes such a thing now. That's your cross the bear now, right? Mark the coats from the Resourceful Designer podcast. He sent me a uh, nice actual like a graphic. It says "Press the stupid button, John." So I have that right in front of me. It's like right there. It's just like this big thing right on the screen. So I, we're recording. There we go. It worked. Mm-hmm. Four weeks. It took me four weeks to get it straightened four out. Four weeks? Five? How many times? I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I know it was at least three weeks in a row. It was definitely, I think, five or possibly even six. It's possible. So One yes. time you went 20 minutes. That was the worst offense. The worst was last week. It was over 30. Was it that yes, long? Yes, it was over 30 Ooh. minutes. Oh, I stand corrected. <laughs> Yeah. So that was that. And then uh, let's see what else happened this week. I, uh, so you said it was a shit storm on uh, social media for you again? Just today. Because I, be- okay, so I belong to a lot of podcasting Facebook groups. Go figure. And one of them is about, it's an editor's, it's called the Podcasting Editor's Hangout or Room or whatever. So I did something today with one of the audio. And th- you know what? There's people in there that have edited for years or some sound engineers in there. There's, you know, people that are just starting editing and just have a podcast. And they want to learn, but they have questions about editing. So I use a thing. It's called Aphonic. You can go to aphonic.com. And I have the desktop version. It's on my version, on my computer. And so what happens, I have a, a show that I was going to edit for, and I just drag it into Aphonic, and I run the processing. And it just it does a great job. Like if one person's low and the other person's high, like if the mics are not set right or, you know, it brings everything up. So I made a graphic. I said before Aphonic after a phonic any questions i put it in there just to you know just a thing to show how, how it looked how nice it looked and dude i got jumped by all these sound engineers like this one guy omni b dash three his name was i guess he was the third versions of the omni or whatever his name was i don't know mm-hmm. and he's a sound engineer i think he's from another land because i think his name's mohammed oh, I... <clears throat> so he comes huh. in and he's like well what about the dynamics of this and I, so again we're an editor, all right? It's not like I'm in the, in the basement. You're on a $70 mic. I'm on a $90 mic, mm-hmm. okay? It's not like we have $350 mics, all right? It's not like we have all this other equipment. It's not like we have a soundproofed room. And we have good sound quality coming in, to mm-hmm. be honest with you. Some of these shows I get, it's like one person has a mic. They're going over Skype. The other person is got earbuds in, and they're talking into the mic that comes with their computer. It's terrible so you take this and you take this flaming bag of dog shit and you try to make it so it's understandable and Mm -hmm. and the best audio you can so if they're going to be listening to it in their car you know going down the highway or with earbuds or off their phone nobody's got stereo headphones on listening to a podcast for the audio oh wow did you hear that you can actually really hear the the timber in his voice or yeah it's it's not i mean if you're doing listen Audio engineers, I don't mean to break your balls and everything. It's podcasting, all right? It's not a song, all right? There's not all this other stuff that's going on. It's just- Not very nuanced. No, it's not. All we're trying to do is be able to hear everybody and distinguish everybody. So, you know, so now, like, they're attacking me. Do you think that's going to happen? You think I'm going to allow them? I'm just going to cower in a corner and let them attack me? Hell no. I'm going to say no. I come out of the corner swinging, you know? Breaking chairs over their heads. No, I just just (laughs) let them have it. I said, hey, dude, you know what? I understand you're a podcast engineer and all this other crap. I said, but, you know, basically look at that file, all right, and then look at the other one. I said, it's a podcast. It's not It's not a song. It's not a rock album. It's not Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah it's, yeah, it's nothing like that. <laughs> okay? Cut me a break. And then the guy says to me, 
Well, you know, how many pod, you know, how many podcasts have you edited? A million. I'm six. like, all right, dude. Now I got to roll out the resume. That's fine. I'll roll out the resume. I said, I've edited over a thousand episodes. Okay. Uh, that, you want to check out the shows? Okay. Why don't you go over to the award winning Audacity the Podcast? How about the She Podcast? How about Once Podcast? How about She Walks in Truth Podcast? How about, you know, Build Your House Yourself University Podcast? How about, and I just rolled out about seven of them. I said, start with those. Get back to me. Tell, you, tell me what you think. Mm-hmm. Mic drop. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, like I'm not trying to break your balls. You're not breaking my balls. You know, I'm but, just yeah. See, I just don't have any finesse. Everything before a butt is a BS. Right. I'm just. You know what? I just put something in there. If you like it, fair enough. If you don't, fair enough. But don't come wading in like you're. I understand you're a sound engineer. I understand you're trying to show everybody. So you, you I'm met, in there having a cock off. So you with some guy over at sound quality. <laughs> so it sounds like you met another. Techno boy. <laughs> he met the techno boy. Yeah, he didn't know who he, he was didn't know messing he, with. <laughs> he didn't know who he was waiting in with. Let me tell you something. I find a picture of him. He'll have a 12 inch cock on his nose next week. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, a little techno bully, bully you, story. You and social media are like oil and water. I, yeah, I guess you're right. I have no defense. <laughs> Like the song says, gets in trouble. Misbehaves. <laughs> Misbehaves on Twitter. It's what you do. It is what I do. I meant to talk about this last week, and I didn't get a chance to. One of my favorite comedians, probably one of the reasons that we're doing this podcast, is Artie Lang. Artie Lang he used to be on the Howard Stern Show. Mm-hmm. I saw him the other day. He had some medical problems. He collapsed, and when he was in Chicago, they had to take him in the hospital. He had this pool of infection in his chest all from snorting heroin and cocaine and everything. And he went on the uh, Jim Norton show on Sirius, and there's a video of it on uh, YouTube where he comes in, and he like takes off his shirt. He comes walking in, he takes off his shirt, and he's got like these scars from where they did the surgery, and he's got like a drain that's coming out of him and everything like that. It's just the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. And the guy is just the shell of the man he once was. Mm-hmm. And he's twitching, and he's mo- he's like the Joe Cocker of comedy now. You can't even, I can't, it's hard to watch him. It really is. Is he still as big as he was? Or did he lose a lot of weight with all this? You know, he tried to kill himself a few years ago. Yeah, he drank, this motherfucker's got the constitution of a, of a mule. <laughs> he drank bleach and stabbed himself nine times, still didn't die. The doctor said that this thing that just happened to him would have killed a normal man. Right. And he's still doing it. He's still funny. And it just, it breaks my heart to see somebody with that much talent, that quick, that funny. Just taken down by drugs, and now we have Trump. He's you know now we're having a war on opiates. Mm-hmm. I guess we're uh, waiting for a drone strike. I, I don't know what they're going to do with all this. I don't know how they're going to stop it now. It's just there's too much going on. Well, even before he took office, this was starting to rise to the forefront. Like how bad the opioid, uh, and most of it is with the prescription opioids. With the oxycotin, and that's oxycotin, how it starts. And, you know, that's we're, how it starts. We're regular people. I mean, it's not like junkies in alleys. It, you know, buying right. drugs. It's regular people, and then they can't get off of it. Mm-hmm. And then what happens is, and I don't know if I don't have this as I don't have this where I can go to it. But from what I heard, it's like seven out of ten addicts can't get off of it. They can't. They can't. They won't recover. So you mean they can't get off of it at all, or they can't get they off keep, of it without help? They can't go they, even with help. It seems like they go back to it. Mm. Uh, I know people in my family that have died from it. I know people in my family that are still struggling with it. You know, with me, when I have problems with my knees and my back, you know, they'll give you pain medication. I'm very, very yeah. uh, thought, you know, I, I use a lot of thought when I use these. I don't like to use them unless, like if I'm using a pain pill, I'm in a lot of pain. And I only use one trying to take just the, the edge of it off because, you know, it scares me. And I don't know what they're going to do. But the guy in New Jersey right now, he wants to try to legalize marijuana nationwide. Oh, Booker. Yeah, Booker. What's your thoughts on the, the marijuana legalization nationwide? For recreational use, I'm not really a fan. So let me ask you a question because, of course, normally you are like to have a libation or t- once or twice, you know, a libation or two after work and, you know, when you're here doing the podcast. What's the difference between marijuana and Alcohol, in your opinion, uh, 
chemically, probably not too much. Um, but they, I always, I know what your argument is. It's the same thing. I'm not arguing. I'm just asking. Like, I just no, I know. Out. I know what your argument is. You're coming from the standpoint is it's like basically the same thing. But I have a, a host of reasons for it, mostly because of the business I was driven out of, and basically uh, being in the tobacco business. Right. All right. And they beat us about the head and shoulders, and it's still going on with the secondhand smoke. Mm-hmm. And the, now they moved on the third hand smoke. Right. Which, as if that's even a thing. Even though the studies, now that they've killed the golden goose and killed an industry off, put a lot of people out of work because of secondhand smoke, now they want everyone to light up on something that has way more, yeah. you know, tar and, you know. No, uh, I understand burn, that part. So of it. it's just, it's sort of like the hypocrisy. Right. See, now for me, I don't think that if it, if it became legal, let's say it just became legal and I decided to try it mm-hmm. just for pain, you know, for pain management or something like that. I would never smoke it. I would probably try to get an edible or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or, I don't know, a pill or something. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I do believe that for some people. And, you know, the people, you know, you're going to find a proponent back and forth who's in favor of what, who's mm-hmm. against it. But I do believe that some people, it is a gateway drug to other drugs. I hear you. Because I, I know of people that have started with it and it just, then it wasn't doing it anymore. So... They moved on to something else. Well, back then, back in the day, we used to have lewds, you know, quaaludes. I forgot about quaaludes. Yeah, remember they were there. They were the thing back in when we were in school. I and they tried. stopped manufacturing. Well, I never took any drugs in my life. I never tried them. So, so yeah. But now, for me, and for a lot of people, they say another really addictive substance is sugar. Mm-hmm. People can't get off of sugar, and if you get off of sugar, yeah, you actually get like. You know, your head clears and stuff like that. And But if you go back and try a little bit of it, you're back on the sugar. Yeah. I'm back on the sugar. Well, that's why um, the, and only in the last hundred years, the reason we have the obesity problem that we do is because sugar got affordable. Like, a, well, yeah, about 100, 125 years ago, sugar was extremely expensive. And until they started the process of refining sugar and mass producing sugar and it drove the price down, and anybody could get sugar. Well, you know, they didn't think it was a bad thing. And when sugar got really, really cheap, that anyone could afford it, and anyone could bake a cake any damn time they wanted. You know, that's like back in the day when you read these old stories or anything. Oh yeah, and then so and so bought a cake, and it was like a big deal because you didn't get cake. You know how much one of those things cost? Yeah, back then? it's exactly right. It was like cost a half a pig, so, a couple of roosters. Yeah. And sugar, when it, sugar got very, very affordable and they started putting it in everything, that's when, when you look at the, the timeline, that's when the obesity problem in this country really skyrocketed. Well, they made, I guess it was like in the 80s, like late 80s, mid 80s, they made this big war on fat. Fat makes you fat. Fat mm-hmm. doesn't make you fat. Mm-hmm. Fat's actually not that bad for you. Yeah. They, they talk about the taste is. cholesterol. Yeah. So, so you saw when, that thing I put on about the eggs? The time machine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was, that was exactly what I was getting to. I right? never gave up eggs because I said, man, they're just too damn tasty. So, and now it's like, you know what? Eat all the eggs you want. They're good for you. So what happens is a guy sitting down there. It's like in the fifties or early sixties. Oh, that video. The video. It's at nineteen seventy nine. Oh, is it not? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has a date. It has an avocado green kitchen set, the steel cabinets, and all of a sudden there's a flash of light in the other room, and a guy comes out and goes, "Stop eating the eggs. They're horrible for you. You can't eat eggs." And the lady's like, "What am I going to do? I don't know. Have a bagel." The yeah. Guy goes okay. So he walks into you know the guy goes and he says, "Oh, thank God." So he leaves, and all of a sudden you hear the flash. He comes back and says, "Don't." Don't eat the bagel. Yeah. Don't eat the bagel. Yeah, he came back from the future like five or six times. And then we you know, and tell him, you know, well, you can eat just the yolk, eat the egg whites, but not the yolks. Because, and remember, this is like, because why it's really funny is because we lived through all this shit. Yeah, exactly. You know, because we're old enough to remember when they got on the anti egg bandwagon. Yes. You know, and the coffee every other day, coffee is either good or bad for you. Right. You know, it's funny because like everything that I eat winds up being good for you. Well, that show you were talking about, Madman, the other day. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the funniest things was when I was watching it. They were having a, uh, it was they were going after tobacco because they said tobacco causes cancer, mm-hmm. and they're all sitting around the table and they're all smoking. He says, oh, "I don't understand this." He says, oh, "My my grandfather lived in '92, smoked three packs a day, got hit by a bus." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, go figure. Yeah, you know. Was... So, but at the very end of the video, the guy comes back and says, "Hey." Just eat the eggs. We were yeah. wrong about everything. It's fine. <laughs> just exercise a little more. Right. It just it, 
It just comes down to your genetics. If That's you're... just basically it. I mean, it's you don't know. You know? Exactly. And it could run in families. Like one, you could have a bunch of, um, you could have multiple kids and, you know, one of them for whatever reason is diabetic or, yeah. you know, what you just don't know. Even though they have the same parents and, you know, there's some recessive gene somewhere that comes roaring back. And then the other thing is, it just seems like every, every time I turn around, somebody's got the cancer. Mm-hmm. Well, if you live long enough, you're going to get some form the of cancer. cancer. Yeah, but it just seems like, I guess. Mm-hmm. You think? Yeah, well, no one lived this long previous to the last. Uh, look how long people are living now. I guess. I mean, 100 years ago, I mean, if you, you and I would be dead. Mm. If you made it to like 60, that was a, a milestone. Yeah, no, no one lived this long. My grandfather lived to 86, had Alzheimer's, f- was taken out by a bottle of bleach. My father in law died at 94. I remember him. Okay. And, One of the neatest guys to talk to. Oh, yeah. He was phenomenal. You do just a podcast on him, on, on what, on the amazing things that he did. He lived to be 94 and he got diagnosed at 92 with cancer. I mean, if you live long enough, you're going to get cancer okay. of some kind. Hmm. I guess. We got to die of something. No one gets out of this. No one gets off this. Everybody's got to no die. No one's getting out alive. Right. You know. That's what they it's like. I'm my hurt. my old boss, you know, he say, yeah, 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 eat right, diet, exercise, and die anyway. <laughs> so it's like not that boss. No, not that boss. No, no, Herb was a swinging asshole. Herb talked like this. <laughs> yeah. See, so, that was my other boss from Long Island. Yeah, you know, where R becomes H. Right. Pat, pack the cat. You know, it's so it's so funny now because you know nowadays what's going on right now with Korea and Trump and those guys throw tossing. You know, insults back and forth, and I'm like, "Hey guys, do you realize that any kind of nuclear explosion is not going to be a good thing?" You know, and these guys are tossing this around. Like, I'm like thinking to myself, like all these people that were dieting. And, oh, you know, the guy I think of the most is Bill Burr. Like, he's not, he doesn't want the dad bod, so he's not drinking anymore, and he's not smoking anymore, and he's mm-hmm. not eating, you know, fat foods and stuff like that, and all. And he, and all of a sudden, he gets wiped out in a nuclear explosion. Yeah. He's like, "Motherfucker, I should have had a cigar. I should have drank. I should have ate the cake." Yeah, I don't worry about too much. You know, hey, like, I mean, outside the obvious, like, I, I mean, like I said, I never took drugs in my life. Right. To me, that was like a no brainer. And I mean, I never, I mean, I drank, but I never even tried pot. I mean, I, I was afraid of my pot. mother and father. You know, it was like, you mm. know, nothing like a good ass kicking to like put fear in the ass. So. I always say the last but tweet. But no, that was out of respect to them, too. That's true. I always say the last tweet's going to be this. <laughs> what was that? That's, la- that's going to be the last tweet. I don't know. I don't see what it. happens. The big explosion. Someone tweets. Oh, you're What's talking that? about the, oh, okay. the nuclear the nuclear explosion. You're talking about drugs again. I was like, no. what? I, no, I was I was moving on. Went over my head. Yeah, <laughs> clearly, <laughs> right over his head again. Yeah. What's so the, what's the space shuttle. Yeah. So anyhow, back to the very beginning part of this whole thing. I I don't know if I want to apologize, but I understand that you know when you do stuff like this, every once in a while you make some mistakes. Mm-hmm. Something's happened. You just shit happens. You keep rolling. Yeah, but you can laugh about it. That's all. It's, that's true. It's like it's not like you lost your house over it. No, I understand that. But you know, <laughs> they didn't repo your truck. Or... Like I'm breaking everybody else's balls about the shit that they do, and the next thing you know, I I'm sitting there singing with no backing. Yeah, crap. how's that humble pie? <sighs> it's a little dry. I'm not gonna lie. A little dry. <laughs> All right, why don't we go to the Hush Your Face promo that I didn't play last week? <laughs> <laughs> After I said I was going to do it. Uh, hey, Emily. Emily from uh, the story behind you showed up in the live in the chat. Hello, Emily. Guess what? I pushed the button so everybody can- He's a every- big boy now. I'm a big boy now. I pushed the button. All right, when we get back after this Hush Your Face promo, we're going to get into some nonsense in the news. Hush your face, is coming straight to your ears A podcast network that's changing gears Bringing fresh funky pods with a fresh funky beat A family of pods that are bringing the heat There ain't no stopping us Keep coming back to us, sick ass pods That'll make you hush face. www.hushyourface www. com. British woman shot in the vagina after sexual fantasy goes horribly wrong. You think? <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing about this is the boyfriend's going to jail. Mm-hmm. I don't understand this. Well, it's assault. 
I understand it is assault. Mm-hmm. See, here's the thing. We want sex so much. We'll do anything. Like, nothing sounds like it's out of the... Nothing's uh, out of bounds? No. It's like, hey, baby, listen, I'm really... You know what gets me off? I need you to take this shotgun and shove it up my hoo-ha, <laughs> all right? Mm, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. That's fine. It's not a problem. Mm. I do it all the time. <laughs> mm. <sighs> all right. Hold on. Let me go get it. All right. Make sure you load it. Load it. Now, look. I don't mind sticking the the gun up the hoo ha, but I'm not loading it. It doesn't get me off unless I load it. I don't know about this. Let me tell you something. If we when we get done, it gets me so crazy. I'll ride you like a Harley down a dirt road. <clears throat> All right. You convinced me. <laughs> I'll put one shell in, but I'll leave the safety on. No, you can't leave the safety on. It doesn't. I want. I want like the danger. Of having a loaded shotgun up my hoo-ha. <sighs> I'm not comfortable with this. Well, you know, I know there's a guy, couple guys that will actually, they, they don't mind my, you know, they'll, they'll do this for me. Give me that they gun. Care. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so he's there and, you know, the, one thing leads to another and he's moving this thing in and out. And the next thing you know, the safety's off and his finger hits the trigger and... Do you and think it was a double barreled shotgun? I don't know if it's a double barrel, but and how big know. is how big is this hoo-ha? I would say it's probably a twelve <laughs> gauge. Well, if they didn't kill her, it might have just been a four ten. Well, maybe you just use like low shot, like a number eight low brass bird shot. Yeah, well, we'll never know. Maybe it's in the story. Let's it didn't <laughs> kill it didn't kill her. Believe it or not. No, nah, that's what makes me. Th- I mean, if that was double buck, I, mean, I was buck shot. <laughs> what a blow the top of her head off. What a mess. <laughs> Now, what do you do? It's like I, I, but the gun goes off. She's screaming, blood everywhere, and he's like, "God damn it! I knew this was going to happen." I think he just ran away, like Sir Robin. In he, the Holy how Grill. did he know? Hey, Joe's here. How would he know that she? If you sh- listen, if I'm sitting there and I got a gun in a woman's hoo ha, and it goes off, I think she's dead. Don't you think she's dead? Well, if she's screaming. She's obviously not dead. A lot of they could do a lot of things right before they die. Mm-hmm. Maybe she didn't scream. I don't know. I don't know. But I think I would have definitely. I uh, mean, do you call nine one one? Well, according to do you wipe the gun off and try to get you know try to I don't know. I don't know where this appeared first, but uh, I got it off the Daily Wire. And it says a 46-year-old British woman was shot after her lover inserted a loaded shotgun into her vagina. Turns out the victim was keen on exploring a bizarre sexual fantasy in which loaded weapons, weapons, so she must have done several, were shoved inside of her. She apparently found the dangerous stunt titillating. In text sent to her lover, 47-year-old David Jeffers, the victim daydreamed about the prospect of her fantasy coming to life. I can't sleep. So excited, she told Jeffers. But when the moment the victim was waiting for finally arrived, the victim moaned, but not in ecstasy or orgasmic bliss, but rather agonizing pain. The sexual game didn't quite go as she had imagined. When Jeffers inserted the shotgun inside of the victim, the weapon mistakenly fired. Panicked, the shooter <laughs> fled the Britannia Hotel in Manchester. You're a smart motherfucker, that's right. Jeffers, who lives in Harhe. Hair Heels Leeds inserted the loaded shotgun, which he claims to have found in the toilet of the Weatherspoons pub at Leeds. Tra- oh, that's nice. What? So it's a filthy shotgun that was in a toilet. So that just might He didn't have that- his own shotgun? Well, it's very hard to get guns in England. Oh, see? So, um, where it is agreed his hand was on the trigger at the time it went off, reports the Telegraph. If she was, in the, if she was over here in the United States, she could look like a porcupine with them things sticking out of her. <sighs> In horror, as his victim lay naked on the bed, Jeffers dressed himself and fled the hotel via a rear exit after phoning reception and informing a manager that a female had been shot before making his way to Piccadilly train station, where he caught a train back to Leeds. The victim sustained severe internal trauma from the multiple shotgun pellets to the abdomen, but she ultimately survived thanks to a hotel employee who contacted emergency services. Surgeons at the Manchester Royal Infirmary worked tirelessly to treat the victim and save her life in the process. Several months later, the victim is still recovering from her gasoline injuries. On Friday at Manchester's Minshall Street Crown Court, Jeffers, who was 
due to stand trial for attempted murder, pleaded guilty to possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life after it emerged that the victim had agreed to take part in the act as part of her own sexual fantasy. The judge, who called the horrific incident a sexual fantasy with dreadful consequences, sentenced Jeffers to a 10-year custodial service sentence. What does that mean? I guess it's maybe Does that mean a, he's like he's at home? Like, like a house arrest or something, I guess. I would hope that he would have. You have to get Pet and Meller to let us know what that is. Yes. One of either Ped or Meller. Yeah. One of them mm-hmm. will have to let us know what that is. Anybody else we know over in the UK? Well, we know um, Stephen Bull. He's over in the UK. Yeah. I'm guessing it's probably like a 10-year probation under right. house arrest or. Listen, you. Probably has to report to a probation officer every week, I guess. Did you stick a shotgun in anybody's vagina this week? <laughs> Did you no. try to stick, stick a vagina? vagina? <laughs> Did you try to stick a gun in anyone's vagina this week? No. Will you try to do it next week? <laughs> it's Joe. And now you know why I say that terrorists want to kill us. <laughs> well, that happened in England. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, he thinks that, you know, we're, we're, there's, there's six sexual deviants. Mm. We're sexual deviants. That's why the Muslims want to kill us. Meanwhile, yeah. But see, I don't, I don't like that because that just gives them cover, right? Like, it, like, I don't agree with that statement, Joe. Uses. He always says that. He says that all the time, and I don't yeah. agree with. That. I don't care what we do over here. It doesn't yeah. mean that we get a chance. Listen, if we didn't do any of that, they still want to kill. Yeah, that's right. It's it doesn't eat, make a difference. Bacon, they want to kill you. So right. Like, I'm not giving up bacon. No. Exactly. It's too tasty. It's too tasty. I'm gonna go to Wendy's and get a bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> Because I like to have meat on my meat. So. <laughs> Sounded a little gay right there. No, well, let me bacon. Mark, let, bacon. Me, let me mark that down. Let yeah. me get that sound clip for next time. Yeah, you go, go fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get fucked by well, goats. Not I fuck goats <laughs> and don't take a gerbil on my ass. Right. Please get it right. You know what we should do? We should get a bunch of Muslims, tie them up, and bunch force feed them. Muslims. <laughs> it came out a little garbled the first time you what said What we should that. do is get you a bunch. You and that big fat tongue of yours. You that big fat lazy jersey tongue. <laughs> we should get a bunch of Muslims and tie them up and feed them bacon. If they had a good bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich with jersey tomatoes that and a little bit of mayonnaise. was just a story and a KFC. Did you see it? I didn't pull it. It was they. No. They accused the, uh, it was either a KFC or some restaurant. I think it was a KFC because they were, there was bacon on the chicken sandwich that they ordered, and they're trying to say that they did it on purpose. How uh, you know, dare just, you? you know, so it's like I don't know where it happened because KFC is like everywhere, like internationally. So. Sure, because it's delicious. Mm-hmm. It's tasty. That's right. See, once again, meat with me, bacon and chicken. How can you go wrong? Yeah, I don't understand that. Diane makes these awesome bacon wrapped dates, which are the sensation. I've of had them every single party we go to. Uh, I, I'm we'll a big be bringing fan. them to a party tomorrow. I'm a big fan of uh, bacon wrapped scallops. Yeah, bacon wrapped. Uh, well, what's you the, wrap bacon around anything? Bacon wrapped Brussels sprouts. Did you see the bacon cannolis? No. Oh, I just saw that on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Facebook. Ba- bacon cannolis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What you do is you get some kind of. Uh, they got paper towels. Okay. Wrap the bacon around the paper towels and bake the the uh, bacon in the oven. Oh, so the so bacon is the the outside acts of the cannoli. As the cannoli shell, <gasps> and then you stuff that with the uh, inside, you know, the cannoli <sighs> cheese and cream and everything. It's like that's very good, quite tasty. Bacon. Chocolate chips, bacon, bacon. Now we sound like uh, Forrest uh, Forrest Gump. Bacon had bacon on burgers, yeah. bacon shrimp, bacon scallops. It's bacon nature's and perfect food. That's right. So who cares if it comes from a pig? I certainly don't. Nope. Doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, those cloven hooves. I look right. I'm not eating the cloven hooves, so I don't care. Like, give me that. You got to be a special kind of person. To eat pig's feet. I, I mean, I can't even. I see the jar. Yeah. And I get the yips. To be <laughs> quite honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Joe wants bacon fried rice with shrimp and chili peppers. That's his invention. Bacon fried rice. I've never heard of bacon fried rice. You might be on to something there, Joe. That sounds like a recipe for uh, either triggering off gout or diverticulitis. Yeah. Hey, Joe, let me just ask you this question. If you had bacon fried rice right now, how would that go? Just wonder. Arkansas man accused of sexually assaulting neighbor's donkeys. Mm -hmm. An Arkansas man is behind bars after allegedly trespassing into the neighbor's property in order to sexually assault 
the couple's donkeys. Everett Lee Compton, 49, three names. So on Monday, saying he's an assassin. He's an assassin. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you got to be one brave son of a bitch to go behind a donkey and try to, I mean, I'm so sorry, but you know, those hoofs, you get kicked by a donkey. I don't know. Well, that expression, kick like a mule. Exactly. You know, it didn't come out of thin air. There's a reason for that. Anyhow, Monday, after he was allegedly caught abusing donkeys, police said that uh, they think he has a problem. Oh, <gasps> God, yeah, not at all. Not be. at all. <laughs> He's already had problems with people's uh, harassing people's animals for the past three years. When no trespassing signs didn't work, the couple set up a camera to photograph the intruders. Well, here comes uh, old Everett. <laughs> Uh, they photographed him on his property on the morning of May 27th and June 4th. The photos, which were turned over to police, showed the man placing a bag over one donkey's head and then rubbing his pelvis against the animal's rear. Foreplay. Mm. <laughs> Place the bag over. The Whitakers also photographed the same man with the donkeys on July 5th and 6th. Police so they're building the- a case. Mm. The police said the picture showed the man, later identified as Compton, feeding the donkeys from a bread bag while rubbing his pelvis against the animal. Wait a minute. Did he actually have coitus with this donkey, or is he just, like, rubbing up on him? Mm. Is he just loving up on him? He's a short dude. Yeah. When, when you need at, a stool? Well, looking at this mug shot of him, it says five foot, and it's, like, about where his mouth is, so... This dude's like only like five six yeah, or five a seven. Here. He's a short. Did fuck. he actually have sex with the donkeys, or was he just kind of rubbing on? Or was he getting the donkeys off? Was he loving on them? No, maybe he was just like pleasuring himself. Well, it says here's some type of sexual interaction with a donkey. Okay, I mean, maybe, listen, maybe he's jerking the donkey off. Maybe he's jerking off on the donkey. Is that sexual assault, or is that just? Well, it's bestiality. It's generally on the books for. Is it bestiality? Most, well, it's a donkey. I understand that, but I mean, isn't there's no? Comp- so if it's a good looking donkey, it don't no, no, count no. like the teachers. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm saying if there's no actual penetration, no, it's is still, it sex? It's still abuse. He's abusing the donkey. That's like they uh, they probably got him on animal abuse. Well, police reported that uh, the officer asked him about the donkeys, and Compton replied that he gave them carrots, but not, but didn't have sex with them. Well, of course he's going to say that. Just gave them some carrots. What's he going to say? I gave him a vigorous shagging? And some dip. <laughs> well, he's very considerate. That's right. <laughs> Compton allegedly responded by saying that marijuana makes him do sick things. Well, then, dude, stop smoking marijuana. Now, see? Uh, okay. <laughs> Gateway. Hey, yes. Let me just say this. Do you think maybe a few beers might make them do the same thing? No. No? No. Okay. Just checking. Because you never have a quenched thirst when you drink. He was arrested and charged with four counts of bestiality, four counts of criminal trespassing, four counts of misdemeanor cruelty to animals. And Mrs. Meaner. And Mrs. Meaner. <laughs> he's still in jail because he he's on $5,000 bond, and he's scheduled to appear in court. A September 11th. So if you don't have Bond, he's going to be in jail till September 11th. Mm. That's a long time for loving up on some mon- monkeys. Donkeys. <laughs> monkeys, donkeys. Yeah, what a difference a consonant makes, huh? Yeah, it's true. The next story, you know, maybe this guy is, you know, lucky that he wasn't actually, he, like he didn't actually have relations with the donkey. Because our next story, you kidding me. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I like the headline. What's that word in it? Hang on. Mm-hmm. It won't let me. I got it. I just, I hate everything right now. You want me to read it? I'm having problems with my computer right now, and I just want to punch something. <laughs> All right. Well, they, I Go got ahead. it up here. It says, 15, 15 teenagers treated for rabies after engaging in bestiality with donkey. Now, see, I said bestiality. See? Uh, Rabat, wherever that is. Uh, 15 minors who sexually assaulted a donkey in the small rural town of Sidi Kamal in the communal province of must be somewhere in the Middle East, I'm guessing. C.D. Kaysom have been treated for Casey rabies. Casey Kaysom. Yeah. And now. <laughs> and now, on a long dis- distance dedication <laughs> to 15 boys that love their pets. I'm and surprised that he's treated, treated for rabies from a donkey. Usually you get that from, uh, you know, like a raccoon or a coyote or something. Well, donkeys, anything can get well, rabies. Well, they can, but it's, you know, generally... It's a domesticated animal. You think it would be okay. But well, the sexually frustrated children, uh, 
and teenagers stayed at the Makra Balasiri Hospital for one week to receive rabies vaccinations after the animal transmitted the disease to them. So 15 Morocco boys mm. uh, was banging a donkey. Yeah. Well, they don't like pork, but they evidently they do like donkey. They like pork. They mm. just won't eat pork. <laughs> they like pork gang. No, they don't like anything to do with pork. Did they go with Oh, me? I guess it's the pork there gang. There we right. go. See, you weren't very clear. I thought so. I was clear. Nah. I want to have a second delay. The incident has put the families of these 15 young people into distress and horror, reports the Daily. Local authorities have been alerted and searched for anyone else who has approached and admired the animal closely in order to limit the risk of rabies spreading among the inhabitants of the region. So a few in the past said, that's a good looking donkey. You could be (laughs) in trouble. I wonder, I I mean, is rabies, do they still have to do the thing where they... Put the needle in your stomach and all that kind of stuff. You got to go through uh, those shots. I don't know what you go through. I know you don't have. I don't think the series is as long as it used to be when we were kids. Man. And I don't think it's been quite a few generations since then. Right. I think they improved on that, but you know, it's still uh, you had to worry. Yeah. With dogs, well, what, see, any kind of animal can get it because what happens is you have any. Let's say a raccoon is out, and if your dog gets bit by the raccoon, now your dog mm-hmm. has it, or your cat. Right. So the same thing is a donkey could be out in the field and, you know, stumbles by a raccoon or whatever the hell they got over there in Morocco. A bat, you know, it could be a rabbit bat. Bat bites the donkey. Now the donkey's got rabies. Guys fuck the donkeys. Now the guy's got rabies. Or goats. Or goats. But my thing is that goats. I say it's, you know, justice is done here. <laughs> do you think they really, after they get the rabies shots, do you think they still should be arrested for donkey fucking? Well, yeah. They broke the law if it's a law. You know. Maybe it's not, it might not be against the law over there. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll read on. Are they getting arrested or are they just, uh, well, you know, um, it's, I just, it's just that. boys will be being boys. I was looking at <laughs> uh, how the many. Is the apparent local authorities. Have been, okay. The occurrence became the subject of mockery and ridicule among the population of the small town. However, it has also become a subject of fear and shame for parents who, in the utmost secrecy, hasten to have their children vaccinated in case they had approached the animal. According to the Daily, the number of infections could be much higher as some families prefer to take their children to hospitals outside the region to avoid humiliation. So how do you broach that subject? Yes, I'd like to. So you're sitting at dinner. I would like to have my child vaccinated for rabies. Well, did he come in contact with a wild dog? No. Maybe. <laughs> yes. Could I? Let, yes, let's go with the dog. <laughs> yes. uh, I don't know if it was the donkey. It might have been the dog. He, he was petting the neighbor's dog. He wasn't fucking. You are not fucking a donkey. <laughs> there was something to do with the donkey. It was a donkey. No, I mean, that's like really. You know, weird. Because generally, donkeys don't put up with that shit. Getting yeah. fucked? Well, or and, getting bit by... Well, like, you can work a horse to death. Yeah. Because they'll just keep going. A donkey, when they get tired... That's just, it. They've that's had it. That, and they just stop. You know, so they're actually smarter than horses in that respect. And generally, they don't they don't put up with, from what I've been told... Um, but you know... <laughs> yeah. Well, people that own farms, they said, yeah, so it's I've tough, been to, told it's, it's tough to work with a donkey because okay. some, they just don't put up with, like, if they just had enough or they're tired of your shit, you know, they just shut right down and, and that's it. They're done. You know, and you, there's nothing you can do about it. Oof. You know, it was like... Can we stop fucking the animals? Can we please? <laughs> Dr. Th- Doolittle. This <laughs> is why we need the Chinese robotic sex head. Again with the sex head. This is Again. why we need that. You yeah. take one sex head, drop it in there between the boys, and guess what? No rabies. Mm. I'm just saying. Mm. It's going to solve a lot of problems. Mm. Who's cleaning it? Who cares? That's what I can. I just like, Look, mm. you take the thing outside, you give it a little hosing. Who yeah. knows? Maybe the thing, the, something snaps out of the mouth and you put a whole new one right back in it again. shorts out. You know, you mm. never know. Never Some, know. Something could happen. Shit happens. <laughs> So would it be a Brand X episode if we didn't have a teacher banging a student? The answer to that is no. You want to read this one or you want me to do it? Uh, let me pull it up. Okay. Let me see if I can find a physical flaw with this one. Like the uh, female teacher had sex with schoolgirl in car, then bragged to friends about it. So this one's not dealing with a full deck either. A drama teacher has been banned from the classroom after having sex with a pupil in her car and taking her to see a West End musical. 
Sarah Barton admittedly being in a sexually motivated relationship with the unnamed girl pupil at the school in Essex and consistently and persistently failed to maintain appropriate boundaries. Is this in England or here? Yes, in England. Okay, a national college. So it's not just here, at least. No, it's, it's all over. A National in- College for Teaching and Leadership panel said, Ms. Barton, who worked at the school from September of 07 to July of 16 and was head of the Department for Drama and Dance when she resigned, took the student to see Matilda in London during a half-term holiday, despite being advised not to go. The NCTL panel heard Ms. Barton taught the pupil, who is referred to in a report as Pupil A, during the 2015 and 16 academic year, and a friendship developed between the two of them that culminated in a sexual relationship. 36 years old. The 36-year-old hottie, I mean, the 36-year-old showed a (laughs) photograph to an unnamed witness of her kissing the pupil, while another witness said Ms. Barton admitted having sex with the pupil in her car. Ms. Barton said in the statement to the panel that the West End trip was arranged by Pupil A, but the report said regardless of who actually organized this trip, it took place in June of 16 when your relationship with Pupil A had been developing for some time. This clearly was inappropriate. The girl pa- on girl, inappropriate? Is there any kind of oh, I don't think it's the tier girl of on, this? I don't think the girl on girl is the, that's the age and the uh, relationship of teacher between students. Right. Once it's a teacher-student, you can't do this unless you're in college, right? The teacher-student relationship is okay in college. Like, I know college professors that basically wore out a set of hips on college students. Well, that's why they wear those leather patches on their elbows on those jackets. (laughs) That's true. It's like PPE, (laughs) personal protective equipment. (laughs) Never thought about that, did you? Not until just now I haven't. Now you'll never see those stupid tweed jackets with the leather patches. They're planking. (laughs) (laughs) They're planking on students. Yeah. You know, you don't want to have... Unsightly elbow wearing out That's, on your shirt. You're absolutely right. You, know, you, you never know when you have to get up there again. I was wondering why they would put the patches on the elbows. <laughs> it didn't make about. sense until just now. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Sometimes <sighs> you got to think outside of the box. I, you know what? I got to tell you, that one went right through, right over my head. Uh-huh. Where's your chest down now? All right. That's right. Yeah. I'm an equal opportunity jet flyer. <laughs> So let me ask you this question. Okay. Just pretend. Can we pretend you're not married? Okay. Do you, you mind doing that? Pretend. Go ahead. All right. Let me. Okay. So what kind of disability would kind of make you hesitant to date a girl? If she didn't have a head. Okay. I don't know too many women that don't <laughs> have a head. A physical disability. A physical, like, uh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, back in the day when uh, Paul McCartney was married to that girl with the one, that one was leg, a gimp, the gimp, right? Okay. The one that, she, and she went on Dancing with the Stars. And the only reason I watched Dancing with the Stars for that season was just to see if that damn leg would fly off during one of the dances. Mm-hmm. It never did, man. They had that thing glued no, on. No, prosthetics tight. are pretty. Um, what they've come a long way. They've it's come not, a long way. Yeah, it's not like you're Tiny Tim anymore. So you know, woman lose lo- lose lost a leg, arm. I mean, how hot would she have to be to, like, let's say she lost know, because an arm. It's not like they necessarily had to be, like, really hot. I mean, they could have had, you know, they could be. If if a girl's a five and she's missing an arm, what do you think? What kind of personality does she have? I have no idea. Well, okay. Would you approach the girl with the five personality? Like, you if mean, like, am I just, what do you mean? Like, am I just stumble it's, across her in public and chat her up? Bar, you're out in a bar. Okay. And you see, like, a hot girl she's like a nine mm-hmm. hot woman she's about a nine and all of a sudden you're like damn and you're watching her and all of a sudden she gets up to go to the bathroom and she's got like one arm mm-hmm. what do you think would you approach her would the one arm make you i mean she doesn't have prosthetic she just has no arm just a nub mm-hmm. about the shoulder so she's like the drummer for deaf leopard she's like yeah okay. exactly she's like the drummer for deaf leopard no, i would you know she i would probably talk to her yeah i would probably but say. i mean would you would you go out with her would you be would it be, I guess what I'm asking you, would you be embarrassed to bring her around your friends and family with one arm? No, I don't think so. No. A leg, maybe? No, I don't think. I don't know. Nothing I, like that? I would, don't think so. So it wouldn't hamper you in thinking one way or the other of the the girl? Like, I know you're not a, 
a girl. I know you're not a fan of women with weight on them. Mm-hmm. You like girls. Well, like you said, well, the other that's day. not necessarily true. Well, you, didn't you say the other day you like girls? With- no, well, there's a difference because well, me- you were you were pointing out a fat chick with big <laughs> boobs, and it's like a skinny guy with abs. Skinny guys with abs don't count. Fat chicks with boobs don't count. It's just fat. I don't know if she's as fat as you think she is. I mean, uh, she's a big, she's pretty thick, rotund. She's a thick girl. Yeah, she's rotund. Well, that's where you say that I like tits on a stick. I prefer that, you know, to the other girl. Yeah, they're a little th- that are thicker. Mm-hmm. So you'd rather have tits. Well, on I a like, stick. like I said, I like proportion. Tits on a stick is proportion. Well, no, or you see the waist because oh. you know it's like basically the you so have you the like narrow a, waist. more of an hour the hourglass, yeah. right? Instead of a pear shape. Okay, yeah. I got you. Or bowling ball. The reason I say that is <laughs> no, but as far as missing a limb or something, no, I really can't. Okay, no, I don't know. Like I said, I've been married forever and a day, so that is true. A woman with one arm, single-handedly winning. Tw- well, I guess so. Winning Tinder thanks to her awesome sense of humor. Daniel Ripolds, are you here, my man? Because hey. I need to know about this girl here. I'm going to put you on to her, dude. Her name's Lauren. She's 21, and it says she's an arm dealer. <laughs> Uh, she lives in San Diego and it says, hands down, the best catch on Tinder, face 10 out of 10, body 9 out of 10, personality 20 out of 10, arms 1 out of 2. Yeah, she's got a good sense of humor. Lauren, 20 years old, from San Diego. Now, are you sure her name isn't Lauren? Lauren. I, you know, I, I still, I, <laughs> I listened to the last show, and I, here we go off on a tangent. I listened to the last show, I said Lauren again, I said Lauren. I can't get that down. This is Lauren. It's a two-syllable. This is Lauren. 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 Right. What am I saying? You're saying Lauren just about. <laughs> Lauren. This broad is 20 years old and from San Diego, California. Had her left arm amputated a year ago. Oh, I she... lost it on a moped accident. Oh, okay, she had an accident. Okay. Gone way too fast. Lost control. Wheel got hung up on the medium. Flew off. Hit a street sign. Ooh. Sliced the arm clean off. Wow. Thankfully, a, an off-duty police officer saw her and uh, administered a tourniquet and was able to save her. And she said, am I going to die? And he said, I wouldn't. So uh, she's in here. She's posing for photos. And I also have her Instagram in here and her Twitter. And she's, uh, there's tons of pictures of her in here. She's an attractive girl. But I'm just wondering if, you know, kids nowadays, you know, they're very, you know, any kind of weight issues, any kind of anything like that, would they date her? And I think she's very attractive. I mean, what do you? You're seeing the one picture over there. What do you think? Mm-hmm. No, she's very cute. It's I mean, a shame. I mean, it's. I guess they must have to wait a while before they can fit her with a prosthetic. How? I mean, she's two years. What are you going to do? Are you thinking you get an arm on that nub? Oh yeah, they can think about all the veterans of um, you know, Afghanistan and Iraq. Some of the horrific that where they've had the stuff blown off. It's a shame they couldn't save her arm. You know, because sometimes that they can reattach. Yeah. I don't know. It looks like it was pretty high, and then you know. Well, well, we don't know how big because it, it said it was be sliced hanging. off. Yeah, it's kind of just be hanging there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she says uh, she felt very defensive and angry after her arm was surgically removed. She immediately turned to Twitter and a decent amount of followers she had to cope with the loss of her arm. Here's a small sampling of the kinds of things she posted. Lauren said that some users made her feel bad about her new body, which only gave her thicker skin. Most people, however, were very supportive of her hilarious posts. It showed me that people still found me beautiful and missing an arm didn't make me less of a person. Well, a little bit less of a person. You don't have an arm. A week ago, Lauren decided to update her Twitter bio with a signature sense of humor. She said she didn't think much of it because she doesn't really use the app for dating. I'm getting a ton of matches and super likes because of it, but I just use it for fun. I don't Mm -hmm. have any interest in meeting anyone. So... But uh, I'll put the links to her bio for Twitter and also for Instagram. But it takes a lot to 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 come back from that because I, I never realized it. That we we talked about the drummer from Def Leppard where he lost his arm, right? And like when when you hear it, it's like, well, yeah, I guess you would have to do that. But it doesn't naturally occur to you when at the time he had to like learn how to rewalk because the other arm is a counterbalance. Yeah, you know, and it was easy for him to like lurch into things. Because, you know, I don't know how much an arm weighs. I mean, obviously, it depends on the individual. What do you say, 12, 15 pounds? It's, Let's just say it's yeah, I mean, 10% of your body weight, maybe. Well, yeah, you know, whatever. I mean, it's just that little bit of weight. I mean, And, and he, it's swinging? I mean, and he, this guy learned how to, like, play drums, and he had to compensate with all those uh, 
drawn hey, pedals. And... Forget about that. How about wiping your ass? How about trying to put your underwear on? Mm-hmm. How about trying to, you know, make – I mean, I, I understand you can brush your teeth with that. How about hand. trying to clap your hands? Pretty much you just have to slap yeah. your leg. Yeah. How funny is that? Can't applaud. Nope. Yeah, I mean, really, it's a. How do you comb a, your hair on one side? How do you dry your hair? Well, I think it would probably be harder with hair? a girl, yeah, because she's got pretty long hair. All right, you might be able to curl one side, the other side, not so much. But you know, when you're in those circumstances, and God, I hope I never am. True. It's amazing how the body compensates and how you learn how to do that stuff. Can't put her hands 10 and 2 on the steering wheel anymore. She can get a she 10. She might not even be able to drive. Who knows? Maybe because she was on a moped at 19, maybe she never learned. Yeah. She's 21 now. The accident happened two years ago. I don't think she'd be on a motorcycle now. Yeah. But, I mean, you could drive a car. She's right-handed, so everything, the stick shift, everything's right-handed for most people. Mm-hmm. You know, so, the, you know, she could be able to I would drive. have to assume that, I mean, prosthetics are a lot of money. Do you think that more people would approach her now because she don't have one arm? She's like, well, listen, you know, she's only got one arm. You know, maybe I got a shot with this. Maybe I got a shot with maybe the one arm like girl. if someone's a real loser? Yeah. <laughs> No, I think she would probably do okay, I, even without all this. Um, it, it's nice that she has a positive outlook. You know, she's if she ever she wanted clearly to... has a sense of humor with that ad that she wrote. Right. Listen, if she was ever a stripper, what would her name be? Come on, one arm bandit. <laughs> no. I thought you wanted to go like with Captain Ahab or something. No, <laughs> come on, give it up for Captain Ahab. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I think uh, I want to see what Daniel's out there. He's on the Tinder. I think he could hook up with this. Is Daniel on now? He was. He was just there a little while ago. He must have just went in and out. He's never here. He says he maybe he'll get another shit eating story. No, we have a we have an assignment for you, Daniel. We need you to you bring up a shit eating story if you want. We could have a contest between Luke Johnson from the Bold and Belligerent and Daniel to see which one could get Lauren get a date with Lauren. You really like, struggle with that word. I, it, I don't understand it. It just drives me. Thank God I didn't name my kid Lauren or Lauren. Just it's L A R, Lar. Lar. N. Lauren. Yeah. Okay. What about Lauren? Like Lauren Green and Bonanza? Lauren. Not yeah. for Ray. He's a nut. He drives with his knees. That's true. So, that's that's Lauren. Lauren. Lauren Green. Right. <laughs> don't ask me. How do I know? <laughs> Those problematic vowels. Lauren. <laughs> uh oh wait a minute here he is he is in here he heard us daniel can you get up on that you think you can i'll send you a link to her and then maybe you can find her on uh tinder i'd like to know what's going on with that uh, tinder you think you can uh make a play for that i like the sh- i wish i could send the picture so everybody could see it but i can't she's i think she's an attractive girl i yeah, think she's, she's at least a she's an at least a california Six and a jersey. I like how you designate hot levels of hotness uh, based dude, on California regionality. California hotness is a whole different ball game from Jersey hotness. Like a girl can be a Jersey eight, but a California six. What part of Jersey? Doesn't matter. No, it does matter. South Jersey, North. How does one part of New Jersey matter than the other? No, part? because you have like some areas where like where more affluent areas, the beautiful people marry other beautiful people and, and have, have beautiful extremely people? beautiful children, like Princeton. Dude, Princeton, it's lucky if they have a set of straight teeth in Princeton. You're, are you serious? I've been to Princeton. Princeton University? I've never seen so many ugly people in no, my entire life. They're not. Those are students. They're coming from all over the place. I'm talking about the blue blood royalty of Princeton. Most of those people fuck inside the family line, and they're all inbred anyhow. Dude, you live in Deptford. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, you, you get a, a New Jersey 8 versus a California 8, and the, the New Jersey 8 will look like uh, she should have a collar I just like how and you, a rabies tag. How like you divide people up? Like you have, you partition things it's up what, like It's like, what I do. A Jersey this. It's a, what a I Las do. Las Vegas that. Is I'm like, just telling like, you. It just can't be attractive. There's a, there's level, Why do we have it a scale of 1 to 10 with women? But why is it based on regionality? I don't know why. It just is. No, for you it is. Okay. So if you see a girl in this whole area and you say, oh, I don't know, she's about an 8 out of a 10, mm-hmm. and then you go out to California and you try to use that same, the same uh, criteria mm-hmm. for what you're going to use for attractiveness here, every one of them out there be a 12. It doesn't matter. It, it, because you, it, you like what you like. <laughs> you, you say what, what appeals to you appeals to you. I understand that, but what I'm saying is just go with me on this, what I'm telling you. It's the, it is. It's, it is the – there's a difference. California hot's different than Jersey hot. It just is. And what about Florida? I don't know about Florida. There's New a York whole, City? 
Mm-mm. Not as hot as California. I don't know. It's just the, I guess it's the weather, the lifestyle out there. They just seem that they don't have as much stress. They don't have the lines in their face. They're not as angry. It's chill. And it's mm-hmm. it shows up in the attractiveness attractiveness of the woman the women. Yeah, I don't I just don't get it. I'm just telling you, you don't have to get everything. The, I think if someone's attractive or attractive, it doesn't matter where they're from, or there's a level attained to it based on regionality. Okay, so okay, let's go with what you're saying then, because okay. I'm tired of arguing. Then don't make Calif- me give you the yips. California girls are like tens, and Jerseys are like six. So there's not a Jersey and a California. It's just one once and. So the California girls are – now, I'm not going to say there's not a straight 10 or, or so in well, Jersey. Sounds like that's what you're saying. Well, most of all. Here's your paddle. Say, start no, back I'm just paddling. going by a medium, like an average. Mm-hmm. So, yes, of course there could be one or two You are tens. delusional, though, with the whole Princeton thing. You get in there's like those really I, I was up there for, I don't know, a couple on of a, years. On a college. Yeah, all around the college. Right, where – there's people from all over the country going to Princeton. They're not all going to be attractive. Well, where else would they? Where are the other Princeton people at? You go into like those the the, the gated communities and where these hedge fund managers and well, believe yeah. it or not, they wouldn't let me in. Yeah, <laughs> duh, because you're a Jersey three. Because I'm a Jersey three, <laughs> exactly. I yeah. oh, can't let him in. He's a three. He's from Denver. He's a California one. <laughs> let him in. <laughs> But that douche character, he's from Philadelphia. Come on in. Sure. <laughs> sure. I like the cut of his jib. He's got <laughs> He's like Stacy's mom. He's got it going on. Come ne- on in. You never understood the cut of his jib. Where the hell's the jib at? Never seen the jib. It's on a ship. I understand that, but I'm talking about on a person. Well, it refers to your ability to actually get the sail and how you like would perform putting it up. That's true. Everything has a Emily Prokop can look that up for us. The story behind the cut of her jib or his the story jib. Behind the jib. <laughs> oh, every time Emily comes on here, we got we give her a, a story to do. Yeah, well, inquiring minds want to know. That's true. And she has an awesome podcast. You learn a lot there. You do. I do. I like it. Not going to lie. Listen every week. All right, intoxicated driver yells racial slurs and tries to flee on bike. Police say Newtown man yells racial racial slurs. Lauren, stop it! <laughs> and threw his cell phone at a cop before fleeing a drunk driving stop on his bicycle Tuesday morning. Police said that David McGuire, thirty nine, was pulled over. Yeah, look at this picture of him. You can see he's all tuned up. <laughs> he's one happy puppy. He is feeling no pain. He was pulled over just after midnight for weaving over the double yellow line in the center of the road. Upon being pulled over, the police said McGuire immediately exited his car and marched towards the responding police officer. When the police tried to explain to McGuire that he needed to return to his car, police said that the driver began to verbally be be verbally abusive. I don't know what's going on with my mouth tonight. I have no idea. Say that one more time. Exactly. Reports show that McGuire launched into a Profanity-laden tirade against the officer, which included some racial slurs. Hmm. We'll get back to that. Police said McGuire then punctuated his outburst by hurling his cell phone at the police officer's cruiser. Then he returned to his car, popped the trunk open, pulled out a bicycle before the police could react. Before they could react, they got a drunk guy trying to get... If Listen, once the drunk guy goes to the back and opens up the trunk... Did this happen in England also? I don't know. I thought it was in the United States. Where's Wilton at? Because the, the the most of the cops there don't have guns. Maybe that's it. Maybe they. Maybe it is in England. It was held held on seventy five hundred bond, but well, that's, that's the dollar symbol there. So. Right. So it sounds like he's from. Could be Canada. Maybe Canada. Seventy five hundred loonies. Maybe. Anyhow, he went to the car, popped the trunk open, and pulled out a bicycle. Before the police could react, the intoxicated driver hopped on a bike and began to ride away. Wire's escape was short-lived, however, as the Newton, Newton resident must have recognized his plan t- and turned around and headed back to the police. He returned to the scene, and police said McGuire fell from his bike, went face first into the pavement, Ooh. at which point he began to grow violently and verbally abusive again. Back at headquarters, McGuire refused any blood alcohol testing. Was charged with driving under the influence, disorderly conduct, referring to an officer, no, interfering, referring, interfering with an officer, operating without a license, and failure to keep right on a curve. 
His attempted bike escape also incurred a citation for bike bicyclist failing to stay to the right. This poor guy. So don't get drunk mm-hmm. and don't, I can't believe that usually if you're with, you know, in a traffic stop like that and you go pop your trunk, don't you think that cops would generally, uh, it's a gun of a spring into action. I would imagine. How do you just let the guy open up the trunk, get a bike out and take off on the bike? I mean, who, who was it? Was the cop from, uh, who's the chief of police from the Simpsons? Chief Wiggum? Yeah. Who, who pulled him over? Chief Wiggum over here? And Carl and Lenny? Yeah. No, Lenny is uh, one of the cops is Lou. I don't watch The Simpsons enough to you know. You don't watch The Simpsons? Not not anymore. I used to all the time. Yeah, it was Lou and Chief. I can't th- I can't think of what the other cop's name is now. It's been a while. See? It's the black cop. The uh, If you can't remember, what chances are? Well, it'll come to me eventually, but just like. I hear you. It's all that sugar. <laughs> yeah, you were all sugared up now. See? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. The days I work, I can't have booze, so. <laughs> My second choice, sugar. And by the way, those big ass king size Reese's peanut butter cups are awesome. I'll like, take your word I, for it. Yeah, they're like thickerer. Thickerer? Yeah, like the little chunky commercials. It's thickerer. When I heard about this next story, the first person I thought about was Matt Meller because he's one of the. He's like a delivery man. I don't know if he's. UPS or FedEx or what's going on. I don't know what what he works for, what company he works for. But he was telling a show on, on the other day, like he went to uh, he went to drop a package and you drop the package at the door and they go to leave. And then the guy opened up the door and said, you're just going to leave it here? Or aren't you going to wait for me to open the door? And Matt's like, dude, you know how many packages I deliver in a day? You think I got I got time to wait for everybody to open up the door and sign yeah. for the package? You're lucky I even stopped the truck. You're lucky I didn't throw the thing out of the truck like a Frisbee. That was weird in that old store because remember when we were kids, UPS, you signed for everything. Right. Now they just toss it in there and they drive away. You Today know, just... I got a new office chair. I came home. It was sitting on the back on the back step. Mm-hmm. Big giant box. All broken It's no wonder up. people are stealing stuff because there's, they're just dropping the shit off and right. driving the, off. The, yeah. the people are following the UPS trucks. Right. That's their new vocation. Right. That's and then what they, they just do. follow and they go get it. They go get whatever it is and then they sell it. You know, seems to me, require a signature. FedEx delivery man charged with assault. A FedEx delivery man was arrested Wednesday afternoon after police said he started a fight with an employee at a Joseph A. Bank clothing store near Danbury Fair Mall. Danbury. Isn't that Connecticut? Could be. Not 100% sure. Danbury police said the staff at Joseph A. Banks had dealt with the delivery man, Javon Willis, 24, of Mount Vernon, New York, in the past and had an ongoing issue with his handling of the store's packages. Handling packages. Mm -hmm. Around noon on Wednesday, Willis made the delivery at the clothing store, and after having an issue with the way he was handling the merchandise, staff Mm -hmm. called his manager. About a half hour later, Willis returned to the store and got into a physical fight with one of the employees. The employee suffered minor injuries. Well, I guess Javon was a little a bit of a scrappy scrappy boxer there. The employee suffered minor injuries. Willis left the store and was located in Danbury by police and was arrested. He was charged with third degree assault, breaching of peace, posted five hundred dollars bond. Due in court August twenty second. Also, if you're in Joseph A. Bank, I'm gonna assume that the employee was fighting with a tie on. Once, uh, I mean, maybe, you, a little, maybe a little swishy. Yeah, what, well, no. I mean, you're in a closed tour. Once, if you ever, did you ever fight in a tie? Believe it or not, no. No. Well, have if, you? If it ever breaks out, if you think you're going to get in a fight, the first thing that comes tie off is tie your shoes and take your tie off. Take that tie that off. That would be. You, that's probably what happened to the employee. Probably Javon got a hold of that necktie. You are done. There's no force on heaven that's going to help you out. Really? Oh, yeah. I would figure if the guy got a hold of my necktie, the first thing I would try to do is stick my thumb in his eye. That's You think that's what's going to happen, but you're much. instinctively, you're going to try to like be able to breathe. That's true. Because that's, that's why cops wear those, you know, those guys that you hate. That's why they wear I those. I don't hate <laughs> cops. <laughs> that's Stop why saying they, that. That's why they, they wear those pop-off ties, because if someone tries to like grab them by the tie, you know, they're not going to be, uh, you're helpless if someone grabs you by the necktie. Right now in the chat room, the guys are arguing over which girls are hotter. And Jer- and Jerry says that uh, <laughs> girls in Jersey are just as hot as Pennsylvania girls. And Daniel is taking he's he's taking offense to that. But, you know, I don't know. You know, you got you know about Jerry. He's no fag. You know how straight I am. I'll fuck you in the ass to prove it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, the FedEx delivery man was charged with assault. I, I tell you what. 
Those you, guys put up with a lot of shit. They do, and I'll tell Delivery. you what, they work their balls off. Especially at Christmas time. Uh, yeah, but it's you, nonstop. It's like Newman and Seinfeld. The mail never stops. It's just I feel I feel bad for those guys because they can't park anywhere. Like in in Jer- uh, over well, in Philadelphia, UPS, you can. They get that UPS car blanche. They, they can just no, park they were, anywhere. They were t- they were getting ticketed. Where and it, it was it was cheaper for UPS and FedEx to take the ticket in Philadelphia. Oh yeah, and in the park, in the park. I used to do that. And then Mayor Nutter uh, increased the uh, fee. Right. You know. Now it was like a, it was like a Brazilian dollars to get a parking well, ticket in Philadelphia. Well, here's the thing. What I would do is if you went to a parking garage in Center City at the time, it was eighteen dollars to park all day. Right. The parking ticket was, I think, twenty two dollars. Right. So screw it for four more dollars as long as they don't tow the car away. I'll, I'll take just the- park it. I'll well, take the parking yeah, ticket. Yeah, I'll park it illegal and take the ticket. But Mayor Nutter came in and he increased the fine to 41 or $42 because he was smart. He knew that's what people were doing. Anywhere you go, like UPS, they're, they're in, they're out, they're running, they're running all day. In the city, it's a different thing. But here in New Jersey, UPS drivers just park anywhere. Sure. It's like, fuck it, right here in the middle of the highway. This is good. I had to go <laughs> down, uh, take my son to the dentist the other day, and I was going down a road that we all know. And it's basically four lanes, very busy. And here's the UPS guy. He just stops in the middle of the one lane. Sounds like Cooper Road. And he jumps out of the car, <laughs> jumps out of the truck, and goes to deliver a package. And I swear, he almost got rear ended. I mean, it's all smoke pouring off the tires, people slamming right. on the brakes. He didn't give a shit. No, they get that car blanche. Yeah. That's what they do. And there's a shitload of stories here this week. Well, I figured since we weren't having Joe, we needed to do something. You know, not being with Joe, although he's over well, there. Joe would read these. <laughs> I don't know what difference that made. That's true. But he added, he added <laughs> Your stuff Your logic is flawed. Well, Regionality, no, not, hotness. He would, he would <laughs> add to the stories. It would make it go longer. We didn't have that. It was just you and me. Ah, you're looking for the flavor. That's right. Okay. Although he's having a ball over there in the chat room with all, everybody else. Mm-hmm. Woman buys female slave. Cops horrified by what, but what she kept putting inside her. This mm. is just disturbing. In Jacksonville, Florida, hello, Estella Clark, forty-seven, paid several thousand dollars to get a twenty-six-year-old woman, 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 a twenty-six-year-old woman brought to the United States. A white woman? What's that? A white woman? No. I was going to say, several thousand dollars. I mean, a good white girl. That's uh, a lot more than that. By Mexican smugglers. Clark wanted to hold the woman hostage and use her as a surrogate. The woman, known as YL, thought she was going to be paid surrogate and that she would be cared for by doctors during her pregnancy. Well, why is this damn window popping up? Okay. Clark reportedly inseminated YL several times a day with sperm from her boyfriend. YL was forced to sleep on Clark's dining room floor. Unfortunately, YL didn't get pregnant. So Clark forced her to have sex with strangers. The men used condoms and Clark would save them so YL could be inseminated later. Wait, I, this confuses me. Who had the sex? The girl had the sex or the sla- enslaver had the sex? The surrogate, the uh, the girl from... Uh, un- Why have a condom then? Why don't you just not let them just... Blast off inside anyhow. Because probably uh, she might have been on her period or whatever, so they were probably following the There's a lot the of cycle. assumptions here. Well, why, why else would they be saving it? I, I don't understand it. Why put the condom on them if she's trying to get the girl pregnant and then save it? I think this girl has a sperm fetish. Mm. I think she's. I think she has an insemination fetish. Look, dude, I'm just a messenger. Okay, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> well, you're not going to get something. This is one. a something stinks here. Uh, let's see who does. Okay, I mean, who does this? Why Ellen endured this torture for about two and a half years? Yikes! At one point, Clark thought Why was too fat to get pregnant and forced her to lose sixty five pounds. Clark began beating How? YL with a metal stick and started to starve her when she wasn't getting pregnant. When YL's family from Mexico would call, Clark would force YL to lie and say that everything was going fine. Blink twice! Yeah. Blink twice! YL did chores around the house for Clark during her imprisonment. She was rescued because someone saw her outside washing Clark's car in the winter. YL was reportedly undressed, and there were signs of injury on her body. Clark was indicted in 2015 for a variety of charges. In March of this year, she pleaded guilty and could face up to 20 years in prison. 
that's all for this. That's all she's going to get if she, t- 20 years. Mm. Like, to be honest with you, I think that she should be tied up and forcibly gang raped. And f- unfortunately, she probably won't even get the 20 years because they always plea bargain these things down. They, they wind up giving them like 20 and they wind up doing eight. I mean, again, I don't want to say anything about the victim. I don't. But it seems like she had, you know, it wasn't like she was tied up and she couldn't. I mean, she was cleaning the house. She was out washing the car. I mean, you don't think she could make a run for it? Again, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say maybe anything. It was a, maybe it was like one of those high courtyard fences or something. Maybe. Maybe she yeah, Maybe she was fenced in. I don't know. But that's got to suck. Yeah. And where's she going to go? She probably has no idea where she's at. She probably doesn't speak the language. Yeah. Well, not only that, she was brought in by Mexican smugglers. Right. So, I mean, they probably picked her up at the border. God knows how far they drove her somewhere. Where's she going to go? Yeah. She doesn't, yeah just, and she doesn't know where to run, what yeah. to say. Probably scared. Sure. You know, it's like. But thank God they got. This woman. Yeah, put up with that there for two and a half years. God, I can't even imagine. A lot of sick people out there. Yeah. Sick bastards. You know, who does that? Well, apparently this, you, you would think that it was, to me, the kidnapping and enslaving thing is more of a guy thing than a woman thing. That's what I thought when I first saw it. But then when I saw it was a woman. Yeah. You know, it's like, then this girl is, no wonder she couldn't get pregnant. I mean, she's probably, she's all stressed out under the rest. She's being starved. She's being beaten. Like, yeah, that can't be. Optimum conditions for your body to be uh, to become impregnated, right? And then again, I still think that this woman here has got like a cum finish or something, so, you know, because it's always like she's doing the inseminating. She's you just can't let it just go naturally, you know, like off the teat. You well, it could be a, might have been like a cleanliness and trying to keep the sheets clean or whatever. That one put me back. I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, clearly not. But you didn't think about it either. I would say, yeah. Well, I, I, listen. Let's not try well, to... think about it. She could be like, you know, she, she probably had multitudes of men coming in there. Right. So She's probably trying to get that, pregnant. Right. But by using the condoms, I guess it was an easier way to collect. And she was, I don't know what you she was You don't have to it. collect. You just. Yeah. But do you want to be the guy that wants to take sloppy thirds, eighths, tenths? Oh. Duh. There you go. There's, now, now fly the why. jet sound now. Hang on. <laughs> Sometimes I got to paint you a picture. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right, next. How many were before me? I don't know, six or seven. Uh, can I have one of them condoms? Yeah. Like, okay, makes sense. Now do you get it? I get it. All right, a little slow on the uptake. Mm-hmm. Just saying. I don't see where this guy broke any laws, but let's find out. I don't think he broke any laws, to be honest with you. Well, there's well they one... banned him from the beach, so they got him for some kind of trespassing, I Creepiness. Guess. Here we go. Man 73 banned from Volusia County beaches for handing out cards seeking sh- sugar Say baby. One more time. <laughs> 70... oh, just waiting like a spider. <laughs> you're like a ticking time bomb. I know you're going to fuck it up. <laughs> Do a podcast. It's fun. <laughs> So, <laughs> Call your friend Deuce to do it. Yeah. Thank him for five years. You, <laughs> it'll be great. <laughs> He'll bust it after a year. He'll start busting your balls. A 73, a 73-year-old Daytona beach man was banned from all Volusia County beaches. All of them. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. I just did something, and, the, and the, the text just got so much bigger. I don't know what I did. I don't even know how to stop it, but that's okay. This could be a nightmare to edit. A 73. <laughs> Say that one more time. Stop it. <laughs> A 73-year-old Daytona beach man was banned from all Volusia County beaches Saturday after he was caught handing out business cards that said, Sugar Daddy Seeks Sugar Baby, Richard Bazraba, Bazraba, Dick Barazba, was approached by officers after a mother of a 16... Oh, there you go. (laughs) 16-year-old girl complained to officers that her daughter had received one of these cards. The card showed a young woman wearing shorts and high heels sitting on the lap of a man dressed in a business suit. The man's right hand is on the woman's thigh. Court said Basraba gave cards to the girl and her friends who were 18, and the girl told him that she was underage, and Barazba continued to talk to her. He pulled out a bra padding from, the bathing, from a bathing suit and said he was looking for someone to fill it, the report said. Mm. Barazba told the girl that she would be perfect and to contact him when she turned 18. 
Rosba was ordered to stay away from Volusia County beaches for six months for violating an ordinance pro- prohibiting solicitation on the beach, the report said. He was not arrested. Mm-hmm. So I guess he didn't do anything wrong. No solicitation. But he just got a ticket. Yeah. I mean, if, he's he, not allowed to stay. if he offered her money or something, then he could have probably got him on a prostitution charge. All right. So, so now what's the next thing you know? Where's he going to be next? Where, where do you find 18 to 20 year old women to be a sugar baby? Where would you find? I mean, where would you go? Well, there's a website for that shit. If you weren't going to go to a website, if you're just you're old school, the guy doesn't know how to get on a computer. He doesn't have a smartphone. Another guy with a flip phone doesn't know how to you know, just close the deal. So what's he do? He goes old school. Mm-hmm. See, he wouldn't be in trouble if he was on the internet. No, if, that never happens. <laughs> I'm just saying he wouldn't. They wouldn't. He wouldn't be banned from the beaches. Mm-hmm. See, old school. He's out there with a car. You know who this sounds like? It might be the Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. What are you- nah, he would not do nah, that. Nah, Jimmy wouldn't. He wouldn't do that. But the thing about it is- But he would is, date a dwarf. No, he says he wouldn't date oh, a dwarf. Oh, he would have dated a dwarf. No, he wouldn't he, date a dwarf. He'd bang a dwarf, right, I say. It, yeah. He says he would never do that. He could swoop him up on his shoulders the like problem, Tiny Tim. Right. He would never- Admit he would never let either. you. He would never admit or let you know that he banged a dwarf. <laughs> but I'm saying he- Right now, as we speak, he could be lying with like eight dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> He could be covered in dwarves as we speak. <laughs> a covey of dwarves. But what I'm saying is, like, for old people, they don't have, they don't know how to use the internet, so this is how they get in trouble. Who goes and prints out cards for this? Well, if the guy has money, yes. he's he's pretending that he has. We have to assume he has money because it's expensive to be a sugar, to have a sugar baby. He probably figures it's the same cost as it would be to have a wife. But where he's mistaken is... That girls today know how to spend. Mm-hmm. You know, they need shoes, they need this, they need that. A lot going on. They need a Xerox machine and a bidet and a jacuzzi. Right. They need the Netflix, Hulu. Jewels. Need... That's right. You're not going to get a, a sh- Mercedes SL500. Hey, listen, the guy's down in Florida. Maybe he's got money. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's 73. He's probably. Right. He's just looking for something. A little some, some. Something, something to, you know, get him to the end. Yeah, because Mrs. from another land might be dead. Could Maybe he's looking for his first virgin out of the 73 that are coming. I don't know. Well, t- as Genghis used to say, yeah, virgin, that's an ugly eight-year-old nowadays. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Genghis. Ay. <laughs> ugly eight-year-old. He did push the age back. It used to be an ugly 12-year-old. Uh, Going with the times? Yeah. Well, you know, he updated his material, I have to say. Tip my hat to the gang. It's true. All right. So let me ask you a question. Oh. You're very inquisitive today, John. <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> there are certain signs that I don't think you can ever come back from. And the swastika, I would have to say, is probably one of them. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't stop this one company from trying to rebrand the swastika as a symbol of peace. So basically what they did was they took a swastika and they made it look like the Rainbow Coalition, like they made it rainbow colors or tie-dyed. Mm-hmm. And they want to sell T-shirts with the swastika. Good luck with that. On those T-shirts and say they're going to ta- change the symbol from a, a symbol of hate to a symbol of peace and love. So so what you're saying now is all I got to do is go out and get a Confederate flag, mm-hmm. tie-dye it a little bit, put some pretty colors on it, and we'll change that to the flag of peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Well, not only that, you know, there's so many um, flags or symbols that you could, like the Soviet Union, sickle and hammer. Yeah. You know, we all know what that means. Exactly. You know, it's like... I mean, the swastika. 100 million people died in the 20th century under that, you know, belief. Right. The swastika is over 5,000 years old. It's a symbol of peace until Hitler got a hold of it. And that was the end of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, when you tend to murder like 6 million people, well, more than like 13 to 15 million, 6 million of them were Jewish. He killed gypsies, um, Ukrainians, Eastern Europeans, his own people. Right. Yeah. Now, let's not forget the night of the long knives. 
Who could forget the night of the long knives? Oh, it's a very uh, – you don't know your history. I it's you. exactly right. But, so, uh, yeah, he, Yeah, I mean, it's just like when you go on a, uh, a killing spree, and not to mention all the people that he killed in the countries he invaded. That's you know, true. And, you know, I mean, you know, quite a – millions and millions of people died in World War II. So I'm just trying to think how this goes down. Guy's sitting there having a couple of drinks. Well, it goes down with him. Oh, how it started. You, yeah. know? <laughs> you know what we need to do? Let's, we need to find something where we can make a quick buck. I know what we'll do. We'll take the swastika <laughs> and then we'll make it like uh, – I don't think they were drinking. Rainbow. They were smoking peyote. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll put these on T-shirts, all right? And then – We'll sell them, and we'll change the whole thing. We'll, it'll be a sign of peace and love, and nobody will— We'll be heroes. Yeah, we'll be heroes. And then they said, look, let's try it out. So they went, and they got some swan stickers, and they had the colors on it. They went out to a bar. The next thing you know— Yeah, I would be curious how many of these they actually sold. I, I can't see any of them. I have no idea, but— Well, you know, to be the, you have the asshole factor that they were just people would, like, buy for a hoot. You would, I would imagine that— like you know, what, so what would that white be, like supremacists, ten shirts, the alt right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe a thousand. You know, it's just like we would say, back eh, maybe a couple thousand. Yeah, this guy's delusional. I mean, I how He's, it winds up going down is they wind up going down in bankruptcy. I would think, and I would hope they do. That's just crazy talk. You know, thinking you're going to do that. I don't see anywhere where it is in bankruptcy. Not yet. Not yet. I mean, how many? You know what the Bellamy salute is? No. When the Nazis went oh, like okay. this. Oh, okay. With your hand out? Yeah. And the uh, it was named after an Italian. It was the Bellamy salute. This country, mm-hmm. when we used to say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, we also did that. Really? But because of Hitler and the Nazis using it. We stopped it. We stopped that shit. And that's when we started placing our hand over our heart. That was the Bellamy salute. Good move. So, yeah. And now, could you imagine, like, a, yeah, let's keep doing that. You know, exactly. That's what these guys are pissing up a rope. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I don't think that's going down. No, it's, it was a stupid idea. They, <laughs> they deserve to be mocked and stoned. Guess and where they're selling? about the head and shoulders with blood instruments. Guess where they're selling the T-shirts? Teespring. <laughs> Same place we sell the brand X T-shirts. Oh. <laughs> well, listen. Well, they can't refuse them. It's a First Amendment issue. That's true. So. So if you don't want your uh, peacemaking swastika t-shirt, you can always go over to brandxpodcast.com slash gear. You know, that's not exactly a ringing endorsement for the Brand X gear. <laughs> well, it's got to be a lot better than this t-shirt. I was thinking of a new uh, design, by the way. Oh, you were? Yeah. Mm, I'm, in, I'm interested. Yeah, you're right? For the Christmas season? Well, not necessarily. It's just something else that I think people would like for the Brand X podcast. I, action wear. I have a feeling it's going to be, I'm going to be the butt of the joke. No. Nothing with Techno Bully? Well, okay. I was thinking about making a Techno Bully t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you're the butt of the joke. Oh, you love it. You love all that artwork. <sighs> Sometimes. The, the artwork is funny. I'm not going to lie. The Techno Bully with the guitar. Yeah. I uh, did make me chuckle. That's why I said, and this would look awesome on a t-shirt. Well, I have to say, the name fits. <laughs> it really does. All right. I think we're done. Uh, I think you're right. I think we're done. I think we're out of here. Radio Vegas Rocks. Please check us out on these networks. Radio Vegas Rocks. We are on Mondays, 8 o'clock in the morning, Eastern, 5 o'clock in the morning, Pacific, and then also Thursdays at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And slings, flings, and dinglings. We are on Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock. And then always you can find us over at the Hush Your Face Network, along with other fine podcasts like Who's Right and uh, the Who. You're just rolling Nonsense. right into it, huh? You're not well, putting, I was just thinking of the ones that weren't in there. But anyway. well, gonna, uh, all right, you... we'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop. Because so, you had it all printed out here, so. I know. God forbid I could just say. I was riffing. Yeah. You okay. sure were. If you are looking for some other great podcasts to check out, we highly recommend these podcasts. Uh, please check these people out. They put out quality products. They sound great, and they're really, really funny. Three is Comedy with Jason, Bob, and Mindy, part of the Hush Your Face Network. They're back today from their vacation. So uh, I was listening in, in secret, at work, chatting a little bit. Look at you. Yeah, on the sly. 
Bad Cop, Bad Cop with Dave and Jerry. And let me tell you something. Those guys are a hoot. Oh, yeah. by the way, Dave had me lick peanut butter off his <laughs> cock once. <laughs> Last night <laughs> and the night before. I'll tell you what. The guys are a little wild. I'm not going to lie. There is a chance <laughs> I could fuck one of my dogs. There is really nothing either of them could do about it. Just saying. I could wear my dog as a condom and fuck a bigger dog. So go over and check out Bad Cop, Bad Cop, one of the funniest shows that I listen to. Love those guys. And uh, I finally got a chance to pull some audio. Mm -hmm. You know how straight I am? I'll fuck you in the ass to prove it. <laughs> the big get even, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> no, not you. No, that's not true because I, I, when they played that, I think it's funny. Where they played, they found that where I was talking yeah, about the turn and they played it out of context, and I think yeah, it's hysterical. I think maybe you're taking the heat a little bit. No, no. Matter of fact, when I did this you one, you said it to him. Like yeah. I fuck goats <laughs> and don't take a gerbil on my ass. I immediately, right. I immediately sent that over Look at to you. Labor saving device, you are. I, I immediately sent it right over to, to Jerry. Uh, who's right with Doug and Anthony, also part of the Hush Your Face Network? Uh, this they are an up and coming uh, podcast. Uh, they're relatively new, and they're putting out a stellar product. And uh, we highly suggest you check them out because they are a riot. I was caught. I just caught me uh, read the chat. <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. <laughs> hey, look, a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. ADHD John. <laughs> Lou, shiny. <laughs> the Pet and Meller Show with Matt Meller and Viva La Pedros, part of the Hush Your Face Network. The Bold and Belligerent with Lorne, Josh, Mike, and Luke. Don't you think that's not why you got that from now on? <laughs> no, I got it today because Joe's not here. Well, we're going to make sure you throw the whole of, rhythm off. One of you guys <laughs> are getting that from now you on. You guys. I'm done. Lorne. I'm done with Lorne. Lord. It's not Lauren's fault that I don't know how to say his name. <laughs> a fat, lazy New Jersey tongue. <laughs> the Unwritable Rant with Juliet Miranda. Uh, they are in New Orleans New right Orleans. now. I'm enjoying watching their social media. They're over there tearing up the town. How could they not? The Robin Slim Show with Robin Slim and Slambo and Amanda, also part of the Hush Your Face Network. Well, I just saw something on social media the other day from Rob and Slim Show. Apparently, Slambo is leaving the show. Oh, wow. So we have to pour one out for Slambo. What's he, starting school or something? I, I don't know. Maybe he's going to jail. I have no idea. Wow. Just, <laughs> just disparage the guy. Can't be going to school. Can't Allegedly. be taking another job. I don't know. Something with <laughs> a donkey. going to jail. Something with a donkey and rabies shots. I wow. don't know. Jesus Christ, John. I don't have a clue. Mm. Ice in the face with Sarah and Rick. Uh, the Horribly Awkward. Uh, congratulations to Sean Fuller. Today, he dropped his 100th episode. I was listening to it. I'm about halfway through it, and uh, it's pretty funny. He's got a lot of guest hosts, and a lot of people left voicemails. Did we leave one? No. no you suck. I'm the only <laughs> one on this show? Look, uh, but I was busy, you know, congratulating another show. Mm -hmm. uh, bad Cop, Bad Cop. Dave, his uh, sister, Strokey Haas. She uh, spit in one of those tubes, and Dave found out that there's a 50% chance that he's 1% black. And uh, so while, you know, I didn't get a chance. How does it become sure. a 50% chance that he's 1%? Because he's, that's his half-sister. Wow. Oh. Okay. So then I sent this. Hey, Dave, John here from the Brand X Podcast. And we here at the Brand X Podcast would like to congratulate you for having a 50% chance of being 1% black. Congratulations. And we put our crack research team on the job to check out to see if we could find out any of your ancestors. And guess what? We found one. So from Black Haas, probably your great, 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 great grandpappy, here's a message. Congratulations, Dave. See, I'm working. I'm trying to cultivate relationships with other podcasts. The Horribly Awkward Show with Sean Fuller. Congratulations, Sean, on your 100th episode. Check it out, everybody. It's a it's a lot of fun. He had a lot of guests, and again, 100 episodes. Um, you know that's that's awesome. It is awesome, and you know also I, part of the Hush Your Face Network. I dropped the ball. God forbid anybody else. <clears throat> Just remind me. That's all. 
Now that I'm older with Shane and Kenny. The toe on the trigger with Daniel and Nicole and Courtney 3000. Who You know, I don't know if there's, we shouldn't say that because it's Daniel and usually Courtney 3000, but then there's been other girls in there. So I'm not 100% sure. We all know. Mm-hmm. We might be wrong. But they've been doing the bum wine challenge where they take cheap wine and they drink it through the show. Mm-hmm. And by the end of the show, it's pretty funny. I'm so many um, podcasts behind on everything because I've been Well, don't so worry busy. about it because Daniel just started listening to our show. And he no, just, I just say I, I, he, I, I'm too. It's okay. I'm too behind on. I'm he too care. behind on telling the trigger. Okay. The story behind with the lovely Emily Prokop, the Nerd Wells podcast with Eric, Sam, and Chris, also part of the Hush Your Face Network. The Horrible Gamers with Jesus, Ryan, Eric, and Gunny, part of the Hush Your Face Network. The Epic Film Guys with Nick and Justin. Everyone has a podcast with Adam and Brian. And the Naked Porch podcast with Ray, Danielle, and Chris. And also the Hunan podcast with Rocky Styles. He's also part of the Hush Your Face Network. He's king Hush Your Face, to be quite honest with you. Yes. And I also want to give a shout out to the Bro Rons podcast. I got to get them on here, but they we were list- I was listening to the show the other day. Uh, pretty funny show. Yeah. They're also uh, new, newly arrived at the Hush Your Face Network. Oh, that's Network. right. They are part of the Hush Your Face Network. Yes, they are. I forgot. Look at, the, look at all the shows that are over there. Yeah. Just a- we're growing. We're growing. We're growing. All right. Joe, you were missed today. And yeah, I hope you feel better. Yeah, I hope and you're... We're not uh, going to be eating steak this week. Yeah, we're supposed to have a big, giant steak fest, and Joe fucked that all up. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. And by the way, I bought you a new comfy chair that swivels like deuces. Yeah. And you weren't here for that, so I don't know. No chair. Well, I guess what we'll do is Joe can have this chair, and I'll, I'll take the, the new, brand new... <laughs> the brand new one will have arms. You can put oh, then I definitely get that chair. I, you know, I had the. Is it red? Chair. Does it have red on it? It's exactly the same chair, I think. Oh, then I have to have it. Okay. All right. All right. Come back next week. Hopefully, Joe will be here, and we'll have another episode of the Brand X Podcast. Hey, um, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa. Yeah, uh, you never answer me. I'm going on vacation. Yes. Are we going to tape on? Not this Thursday. I've been reminding you, and you keep kicking the can down the road. Next Thursday? Not not next Thursday, but the Thursday after. I will not be here on Friday the 25th, I you think. You want to do Thursday? We can do Thursday. Yeah. I mean, I can come in a day early. Okay. We'll do Thursday. Yeah. And then when I... Because then what I'll have to do is do it and immediately do the artwork. All right. Or we could just... Oh, you know what? I can get... The, no, I can do the artwork at the regular time. You sure? Yeah. I'm leaving Friday. I'll be coming back Sunday night. So I can do it on Monday. All right. All right. Yeah, that, that'll work. All right. So not this week. Coming up. The following week. The following. Two weeks from now. Right. We'll be on Thursday night. Right. Instead of Friday night. Mm-hmm. All right. We can do that. Just so we can do our media. There we go. Yes. People might want to tune in. Right. Everybody will be here Friday and we won't be here and they'll be like, oh, right. no brand X. What are we going to do on we a Friday turn, night? You can turn the camera on and put on a sandwich. <laughs> I was like, we were on last night. Where were you? <laughs> I might do that. <laughs> Here's a replay of last. This is what you missed, unless I sing without any. Yeah, music. that's why I've been telling you. Like, hey, we gotta. I'll forget. Now, yeah, well, I know you will. There we go. All right, everybody, come on back next week for another episode of the Brand X Podcast. And everyone have a great time. Great time doing what? Well, because I don't know what time they're going to listen to this. You always break my balls when I say have a good night. So it's good. Uh, whatever. Shut the fuck up so I can end the recording. (laughs) That's it. We're just getting into it.